just because no FBI agent tells the inspector general, I admit I'm biased and politically motivated against President Trump, doesn't mean there isn't overwhelming evidence of bias and political motivation in the record. Um, to use just one example, uh, an FBI lawyer involved intimately in this FISA process against a Trump campaign associate, Carter Page, sent a number of texts in and around the election of President Trump. Here are a few of them. The crazies finally won. Another one. This is the Tea Party on steroids. Another one. Pence is stupid. Another text that he sent. I just can't imagine the systematic disassembly of the process, the progress we've made over the last eight years. And finally, when asked whether he intended to keep working during the Trump administration, he said, quote, viva la resistance. Regardless of what that FBI lawyer admitted, do you see evidence of political bias or motivation against President Trump in those text messages? Well, I would just say, Congressman, as I've said before, that I consider the report to have described conduct that I consider unacceptable and unrepresentative of who we are as an institution. Uh, I'm not going to comment on specific people's conduct for a variety of reasons, but I will say that political bias has no place in today's FBI. Well, I appreciate that, but I'm going to ask you to comment on someone's specific con conduct because that very same FBI agent is the one the Inspector General found in his report was the one that tampered with evidence by counterfeiting an email from an intelligence agency to illegally continue surveillance of a Trump campaign associate. That's what happened, right, Director? Again, I would just refer you to the report. Well, the report acknowledges that. Um, so does the Department of Justice and the FISA court. Um, they acknowledge that this was illegal surveillance with respect to at least several of these FISA applications because there was not probable cause or proper predication, correct? Right. So to the point of one of my Democratic colleagues that there was no fraud on the court, illegal surveillance and changing evidence to conduct illegal surveillance is the very definition of fraud on the court, is it not? Well, I certainly think it describes conduct that's utterly unacceptable. And it's what took place here. Well, again, I refer to the report. We have accepted, and I've been very clear about this, we've accepted every finding in the Inspector General's report, uh, including some that are extremely painful to us as an institution. And, and I appreciate it, Director Ray. I, I love the FBI. You know my background. Um, I know what you're trying to do. I know the difficult position that you're in. Um, I think the record is clear. I remain convinced that the prior administration weaponized the FBI for political motivation and purposes. I just wonder whether or not you're going to be able to put the genie back in the bottle. Now, there's a report that uh, Mr. Kleinsmith that, that uh, altered information that was supplied to the FISA court um, that he was allowed to resign. Is that accurate? Uh, well, Mr. Kleinsmith is no longer with the FBI. Um, and I don't think I can comment on a specific personnel matter beyond that. Okay, well, let me uh, tell you, sit here right now. when you have an FBI agent, and, and you don't need to defend the 37,000 employees, they're not being questioned here. And I can tell you, as a former felony judge, I had FBI agents come to me. They would never have dreamed of lying in an affidavit or changing information to misrepresent the facts to me or any other judge. There are people across the, the country whose reputations have been sullied by the improper, or I believe you said unacceptable and unrepresentative actions at the FBI here in Washington, D.C. They're not under attack, but the reputation of the FBI has been so sullied and we all hoped that when you became director, you were going to help fix that. But I can tell you, I, I know that you wouldn't be in this position if you didn't believe that there was deterrent effect in punishment. That's what law enforcement is engaged in, at least part of the job. So when you have somebody 
that violates American civil rights and commits a fraud upon the FISA court, and the court doesn't do anything but appoint somebody that's friendly to the position of the fraud as an amicus, then we continue to have questions not only about what needs to be done to fix FISA, but if, if we ought to go back to the way it was before the 70s. So this is serious. So when you have an FBI agent, and, and surely you're aware to commit a fraud upon a FISA court or any court or to misrepresent facts in something that is sworn, uh, those can involve crimes. And this guy's not even fired and there's no indication he's going to be prosecuted. I know you're saying it's a personnel matter, so I can't get into it. But I'm telling you, the FBI reputation here in Washington cannot be cleaned up until there are people that are held to account for the unacceptable actions here in Washington. And letting somebody resign sends a message to anybody else that wants to get political active and use their job at the FBI to further a political will. The message to them is, well, if I get caught, I'll be asked to go take a more, a better paying job somewhere else. Great punishment, no deterrence, and business goes on as usual. We needed an FBI director that would clean this mess up so America could feel good about it. And I can tell you, when you come in and say, it's a personnel matter, can't really deal with it or talk about it, you're not helping improve the reputation. Well, let me, let me uh, ask so, you this question, yeah. Mr. Ray. Uh, uh, Greg Jarrett, uh, the journalist, wrote a, a book, actually a series of books, on the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. Uh, and in his latest book, uh, he, he describes it as the story of ambitious and unscrupulous people in high positions of government who abused their authority. They sought to subvert the rule of law and undermine the democratic process. They weaponized their powers to influence a presidential election, undo the result they did not like, and extrude the elected president from office. Our intelligence community and the FBI were at the heart of this illicit and unprecedented scheme. As director of the FBI, what's your response to that observation? My response is that the conduct described in the Inspector General's report is unacceptable. You say unacceptable. And that it's unrepresentative of the FBI that I see every day working there as director. Let me ask you, who's been fired as a result of the Inspector General's report? Well, most of the people involved in the investigation who's that's been featured fired? in Inspector General's report. Who's been fired? Well, there are a few people who are no longer with the FBI. Some of them have been terminated. Some of them left on their own. Well, let me ask Some you, of them have been, sued me. Who's been disciplined? Who's been disciplined? <laughs> like I said, there have been a number of people who have been terminated from the FBI. Some of them terminated have sued Terminated or me. allowed to resign? Well, in some cases, terminated. Yeah, you, you use the, the, the word unacceptable. Um, I would think you would find a stronger word for that over what has happened to, to, by, by the actions of people who sullied the reputations of every decent person at the FBI and, and disgraced the agency that you now head. You know, the, the, the FBI is, is entrusted with the most terrifying powers that, that we can give our government, the, the power to ruin people's lives, the, to, to invade their privacy, to launch pre-dawn raids on their, on their homes, to bankrupt them with, with legal costs, to deprive them of their liberty. We entrust you and your agency with these powers to protect our liberty and to protect our safety. And when those powers are abused in the manner that we saw in this whole Russian collusion hoax, that's a direct threat to our freedom and to the credibility of your agency. And I'm terribly disappointed that you cannot summon the outrage to put it in stronger words than just this is unacceptable and doesn't represent the, the FBI. Unfortunately, at the moment, it does represent the FBI or at least the leadership of the FBI that committed these abuses. You were appointed to clean things up. And I, I, I'm just, after reading the IG's report and, and, and the Strzok and Page emails and, and uh, the actions of Bruce and Nellie Orr and McCabe and Comey, 
Frankly, Mr. Director, I don't trust your agency anymore. 